We have Dave Lamb up next, National Property Director, Sunstar Insurance. Dave, he's a uh, National Property Director with Sunstar Insurance Group. They're a member of FLIA, and uh, Dave's going to go into, you know, what his, what his firm does and how things are going post-COVID in the insurance market uh, for real estate. Dave? Thank you. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming to this presentation today. Um, I specialize in working with property owners, managers, and REITs across the U.S. And I want to kind of help answer one of the questions that we're getting more than any other. Uh, what can I do to minimize our rate increases on our insurance renewals? Um, can we go to the next slide, Michael? Uh, right now, we understand that it's becoming more difficult for property owners as renters are, uh, rents are becoming harder to collect and it's becoming harder to raise up rents as the fixed costs such as real estate taxes and insurance premiums are going up. At the same time, we are entering a hardening market as claims are steadily increasing in both frequency and severity and returns for carriers are going down. Uh, the threat of COVID-19 claims are also weighing heavily on carriers right now. Um, according to Woodruff and Sawyer, uh, property rates have been increasing for every month since October of 2017, and the carriers for property have had over a 100% loss ratio for six of the, net, of the last nine years. Um, I'll go into a little bit greater detail later on, uh, but there are a variety of strategies that we can use to help keep premiums down uh, with everybody. Uh, one of the big things is to work with a specialist. It's more important now than ever to work with somebody who knows the carriers, knows the underwriters, um, also has a relationship with them. Um, you want to make sure that whoever you're working with, they do have an understanding of what those carriers are, are trying to write, um, both from types of business, geographical locations, um, you know, past claims. Um, it's really important also to have a, a good narrative. You know, as a broker, our job is to put um, you know, the insurance company in the best light possible. We also want to take a targeted market approach. So when we're going out, whether it's for a new piece of business or for renewals, um, with fewer and fewer carriers in the property marketplace right now, uh, it's very important to be very targeted on who you go to and when. Um, one of the other things that we're really pushing right now is to lock in longer terms. Uh, we do have a few carriers that will write terms for longer than a one-year period. Um, in a hardening market where rates have, you know, been increasing, this has become more and more important in a, um, a very good strategy um, that we're implementing. We also want to request audits when it's appropriate. Um, we want to make sure that you're only paying for exposures that are, that are present. Um, I want a little bit more on some of the things why this is very important. And finally, you know, Bigger is not always better. Uh, in the past, grouping as much of these exposures and getting as much premium was always the best option to get the best pricing. Uh, this is not always the case now as carriers are specializing in specific risks and losses are impacting rates more now than ever. Can we jump to the next slide? To understand what we need to do moving forward, we need to first understand how we got into this hardening market. Insurance on property, especially habitational um, and hotel risk, has been the largest driver in carrier loss ratios. And many carriers have now decided they will no longer write this type of business. And the ones that are writing this type of business are increasing rates and deductibles to levels where they believe they can be now be profitable. Um, there is a number of headwinds that are you know, looking towards us, not only in the rest of 2020, but also moving into 2021, um, carriers being becoming much more conservative in how much limits they will put out there. Um, in the past, it was very often we could easily get $25, $50 million worth of, worth of limits from a single carrier. Uh, now we're often half many times have to put five, six, seven carriers um, to get that same 50 to $100 million um, worth of exposure. Um, this becoming more on layered programs as well. Um, I put together a number of Lloyd's and domestic programs over the years. Um, before, we'd have a number of carriers who were trying to get on those lower levels, 
Um, we're wanting as much premium as possible. Now we're seeing, you know, carriers either want to close a $5 million limit um, or maybe even just do a, a much smaller limit than they would even offer just a couple of years ago. Um, reinsurance pricing is also going up, which is uh, trickling down to how much the cost is for the individual insurance. Um, right now we're seeing 15 to 20 percent uh, in most of the London reinsurance market increases from prior years. Um, certain incidents where we're having higher loss ratios, we're seeing even more increases over that. Um, you know, why is this kind of happening? Um, the big issue right now is we are having a lot more severity. Um, we're having a lot more instances such as hailstorms um, across the South and the Midwest. Um, as you guys are hearing about now, we're having a tremendous amount more of, of wildfires as well. Um, and then on the general liability side, the amount of claims, whether it's the, you know, what would in the past be considered a small uh, general liability claim, a slip and fall that might be five or $10,000, um, we're often seeing these being eighty dollars to $100,000 now. Um, there's also a whole lot less carriers in the market. Um, when we are going out for whether it's a habitational or a large schedule um, of property, uh, we used to go to 15 to 20 different carriers that might be a good fit for that individual risk. Um, now we're typically looking at, you know, three to six companies uh, just because there's not as many carriers who are trying to be competitive in this space. And a final kind of reason why, you know, we are seeing this hardening of the market is the investment income that these insurance companies are able to get is much lower um, due to interest rate and um, exposure than what they are able to get in the past. Um, in the past, they were often able to have a loss ratio over 100% and still break even or make some sort of a profit. Um, now, with interest rates being so low, um, you know, when they're at these type of loss ratios, they're not able to make a sort of a profit, which if you've kind of looked at some of the stock market figures for many of the publicly traded companies, um, they have been reporting, you know, multi-billion dollar losses as well. Can you skip to the next slide? So choosing the right broker um, is extremely important, as I, as I mentioned before. Um, it kind of goes along with making sure that we're targeted and having a good narrative. All three of these things kind of put together is really kind of what allows us or any other good broker to get the best terms possible in this difficult environment. Um, kind of like any sort of business right now, if, if an underwriter has looked at an account for two, three years in a row and we're unable to to write that business, the next time we submit that to them, it's very likely it's going to go on the, the bottom of the pile. They're not going to spend much time on it, and they're just not going to be nearly as, as, as aggressive. So that's why we want to make sure that we're dealing with, you know, the companies that we do have a lot of relationships with, that we do a lot of business with. Um, right now, what we're doing is we're just picking up the phone and calling underwriters and kind of walking through accounts with them instead of doing as we traditionally would do, uh, which would be to send them full submissions. Um, you know, we have a lot better response from the underwriters by doing this so that we kind of get an idea of where they're at on this type of risk based on geographical location, um, COPE information, um, you know, loss ratios. And by doing this, we can kind of work with them, not take up too much of their time and kind of get a, a good idea if they're going to be a, a, a good fit um, for our insureds. So instead of sending the whole submission over to them, uh, we're kind of doing these five five minute um, kind of interviewing sessions where we're kind of interviewing the underwriters to see who is going to be um, the best fit. And if it does seem like it's going to make sense with what we're looking for in terms of pricing and premium, then we submit the whole um, application over to them. When we're sending these applications over, it's extremely important to have good narratives. Uh, one of the most important things is, you know, we are always on the insured side. We're here to represent you. So while we do have to make sure that everything we're saying is factually correct, we do want to make sure that we are putting um, the insured's company in the best light. Um, if there have been claims in the past, we want to go through and say, what have we done um, to prevent these things from from happening in the future. 
Um, so we use Sedgwick, uh, which is one of the largest third-party administration companies. Um, they also do risk assessment for many of the insurance companies. Um, but we use them um, for a lot of our property customers um, to help put into processes um, you know, so that if there was a large claim or if there's been frequency issues in the past, we can use them and we would, you know, these are things that we would pay for as a, as a company for our insurers to help put in plans um, so that we can show that we're being proactive to these insurance companies and that we can then negotiate the best terms and pricing for you. Um, again, it's very important on the, that we're targeting the right carriers. Um, it's also becoming more and more important what time of year your renewal process is in the calendar. It is becoming more difficult for November and December um, renewals as a lot of people aren't wanting to overextend themselves until the, the Lloyd's treaties, uh, which come out typically the 1st of February, um, come down because they're not sure what their reinsurance um, pricing is going to be. So one of the things that we've been doing recently is moving a number of our larger clients um, to earlier dates in the year so that we can get them better pricing. Um, and then the last thing on this slide here is we are looking um, to do as much long-term um, capabilities as possible. We do have a carrier that will do a, a three-year policy. So that does lock in rates for, for three years um, with rates you know, becoming more and more difficult and increasing year over year. Um, this is one of the biggest advantages I think that, uh, that you can have if we can lock in pricing for a three-year time period. Next slide, please. A couple of the other tools that we have been using consist consistently over the last two years um, is using deductible buybacks. Um, with loss ratios becoming more and more important, um, this has been one of our, our key tools. Um, so we've been doing, traditionally we've been doing higher and higher deductibles. And then we can go in and there's certain companies over in London that specialize in doing with dealing with deductible buybacks. So a good example would be, uh, we recently had a customer that had about $1.5 million worth of insurance premiums. Uh, we were able to raise their deductible from 25,000 up to $250,000. We then went to one of the Lloyd syndicates that we work a lot with and got a three time buyback. So we lowered their deductible from 250,000 back down to 25,000. This did two things for this client. One was that it did lower their premiums overall by about $89,000 a year. Um, but more importantly, if there is a claim, um, you know, that's within that couple hundred thousand dollar mark, that's now gonna go on to the deductible buyback loss runs instead of hitting the master policy. Um, so when we go, you know, into the future and we're remarketing these accounts, not only are you getting a savings right now, but more importantly, we're preserving the, the loss ratio that you have on your master policy, which lets us get better terms and pricing for you moving forward. Uh, we're also requesting that insurance companies do audits for a number of our customers. Uh, this is especially important um, for hotels or anything that is, um, you know, has to do with, with tourism. We're also using it um, for certain of our companies who are having trouble collecting rent or just not getting, um, you know, tenants are just moving out. We're actually having the insurance carriers come in and do audits so that even if you've already, um, you know, prepaid for these premiums based on if it's, uh, if it's hotels based on, you know, nights occupied, or if you're talking about apartments or office or retail rents coming in, we're actually having the insurance companies come in and do audits so that um, you know, we can get some of this money either refunded back uh, for the current insurance premiums or when we're working on renewals, getting those figures lower down so that the future premiums are lower. Uh, we're also doing audits on flood a lot. We've worked with a number of, of carriers and engineers um, to make sure that the FEMA mapping is correct. We've had a number of instances where the normal FEMA mapping came in at around $35,000 in an annual premium for a building. And by using some additional resources um, and engineering companies, we're actually able to show that that was the, not the correct um, mapping that, that FEMA did have. 
and we were able to lower their insurance premiums from over 35,000 uh, per building to around 7,000 per building. Uh, this was particularly important for one of our customers down in Florida. Um, they were paying over $110,000 in flood, um, and we were able to knock that down to just a little over 35,000 for all their buildings. Um, last of all, um, as I mentioned before, bigger is not always better. Um, what we're finding is it's a lot better to group individual, um, you know, locations into buckets. Again, there are certain carriers who, who are very competitive and specialize in certain things. Um, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're getting those risks into the hands of the people who specialize in that type of risk. So, for example, there's a, a number of companies, they only do masonry non-combustible and joystick masonry construction. Um, there's other companies who specialize in high wind and coastal areas. Um, you know, Oklahoma and Texas um, kind of becomes their own bucket as well. So that's one of the things that we've done. Um, another one of our clients, um, you know, what we were able to do instead of having all 600 million of their property altogether under one policy, uh, we ended up splitting it up into four different policies um, with four different property carriers. Um, and we split them up based on claim history, geographical location, and COPE, um, COPE features. So by doing that, uh, we we're able to save them a little over $120,000, um, basically just by splitting them up and getting them into um, the proper carriers who are really wanting that type of business. You know, we see a lot of times, you know, one large claim is really affecting it, you know, an entire schedule. So by removing that one location, um, it is going to increase the rates for that one location. Um, but overall, we're able to see a significant savings um, over the whole schedule. Next slide. Um, it looks like we have about 10 minutes left. Um, I was wondering if there's any questions. So, yes, there are some, some questions that have come in. Um, so this, this question right here is with regards to, um, you know, like getting um, an offer from multiple carriers um, you know, what, what's the process that you go to, you go through, um, you know, when, when somebody has a, um, trying to paraphrase this guy's question. Yeah, I think they're just kind of looking for kind of what's the general process that we do. Um, so our, our first step um, is we always want to talk and see what are your general objectives. Um, oftentimes, obviously, it's just, you know, it's, it's what is the pricing, what's the best pricing I can get, and how is it going to meet my lender requirements. Um, other times, there's certain coverages that are very important to people. Um, earthquake is, is one of those. Um, once we kind of have an idea of what their, the client's goals and objectives are, you know, the next thing that we do is we get a, a statement of value, which is going to have the general information um, on the buildings or the schedule of, of buildings. Um, a copy of the current policy because we do want to review and see if there is any sort of holes or issues that you may or may not be aware of um, in the current policy, as well as, you know, a copy of the current loss runs. Once we have those, um, then we can kind of decide um, by telling, by seeing which carriers are going to be the best fits. So we kind of do an internal um, submission. And then what we do is we start picking up the phone. Uh, we call you know, the underwriters, we have a very good relationship, not only with the, with the wholesalers, um, but also the individual underwriters for the carriers. Um, so we just kind of pick up the phone. I mean, we have a good understanding. We do so many of these that we have a very good understanding of who is going to be the most likely. Um, but we do just pick up the phone and, and call them. And we walk through and they say, okay, we like, you know, this part of the schedule, but we don't like this part of the schedule. Um, I might be able to hit your pricing target, but we're going to want these types of um, you know, these types of deductibles. And then once we kind of have that information, then we go back to the clients. We let them know, here's kind of what we're hearing. How would you like us to proceed moving forward? And then we'll do full submissions to those individual carriers that we think are going to be a good fit. And sometimes it's going to be all, you know, all with one carrier. Um, sometimes it's going to be multiple carriers. 
Um, but we do get much better responses from the underwriters by taking this approach. Um, you know, with so few carriers now writing property, um, they're just very much overworked. So the fact that they know we've already kind of, you know, broached what we're talking about with, uh, with the client and they're very likely to, you know, have a good chance to buy in the account. Um, it just gives us a lot better, I guess, kind of, um, a lot better negotiating power, um, by doing it this way than just doing a, you know, traditional, put the accord apps together, get the loss runs and just send it out to every market, um, under the sun. So it is a lot more work on our part. Um, but by doing that, it does get a lot better results for the customer. So for people looking to save money right now, that's the, that's your recommended approach. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you. It, it's difficult to save money um, unless you're kind of been in a bad um, policy before, you know, our goal right now is, is to minimize rate increases. Um, right now it's just, it's becoming much more difficult to get um, the, the, the same kind of terms and premiums that we've had the last couple of years, um, especially things such as wiring issues. Um, if there's federal Pacific um, breaker boxes, as uh, claim claim issues, all those types of things um, make it more and more challenging, which kind of goes back to the narrative and the relationship that we have with um, with the carriers. So I would love to tell everybody that we could save them money, but to be honest with you, that's not realistic. You know, our goal is to make sure that we get you the best, you know, terms and pricing that's available today. Um, and that process I would say is the best process. So Dave, do you mind just telling us how like COVID has impacted uh, your day-to-day -day, uh, work life and um, you know, how uh, you know, you've been interacting with your clients and what types of clients that you're, you're currently uh, working on behalf of and stuff of that, of that nature. Absolutely. Um, well, the first change is, you know, I'm working now because we're working remotely. So I'm working in a, uh, uh, the basement of my house instead of, uh, you know, at our office. Uh, but I say, you know, most of our clients um, are somewhere between, I'd say 50 and about 800 million worth of total insurable value. Um, we do have clients all across, you know, all across the U.S. Uh, we have been sending out um, a bunch of information regarding uh, COVID-19, uh, what they can do to help uh, mitigate any potential um, lawsuits in the future. Uh, we've also been kind of keeping them up to date with different um, court cases that have been going across the, the U.S., um, especially on the on the workers' compensation side, we've been sending out a lot of information regarding that. Um, it's you know it's a very much an unknown right now. Um, insurance carriers are telling us that you know if they are forced to you know pay for business income, there's a good chance 60% of the insurance carriers in the in the world um, are going to go bankrupt and go under. Um, but there is legislation on, on both sides of the issue. Um, and it's really just going to kind of come down over the next 12 to 18 months, what the government and the court system say. So for people who are thinking about Sunstar and, and talking to Dave Land, why, why, why should they reach out to you? Why should they reach out now? And why, why Sunstar over some of the competition in this space? Sure. Well, I think the first of all is Sunstar is, you know, we're, we're good size. Um, you know, we're, Last year, we were the 35th largest independent agency, um, and we've been growing significantly um, since then. Um, you know, we don't do any sort of advertising or anything else like that. Um, all of our new business comes from referrals from our, from our current clients. I think kind of what separates uh, me from a lot of people is that, you know, with my background and only dealing with, you know, property and the general liability for properties. So if you like property managers, property owners, REITs, um, it kind of gives me a unique perspective um, because we do have so much experience. So we, we do kind of understand what you are going through as the, as the building owner. Um, I've also set up a number of um, layered programs, both through um, Lloyd syndicates and domestic syndicates. Um, I travel over to, to London a couple of times a year um, and meet with the individual syndicates over there. So we do have a very good um, relationship with the underwriter. And as things become more and more difficult, 
you know, the fact that they know we're not wasting their time, um, that we know what we're doing, the types of submissions and applications and narratives is much more, more thorough um, than what a lot of people put out there. Um, and just our general knowledge base. Uh, we can read through policies for people. That's something that we do offer um, at no cost. So we can go through and we can kind of explain, you know, why, why coinsurance, um, you know, could be an issue on your policy. You know, do you have enough ordinance and law coverage? You know, we, we can give real life examples of, of things that have happened to other customers. And then you can kind of make the decision that, you know, that's the issue. Um, there's a lot of things that we do offer people and it may not be a good fit for everybody, but our job is to kind of educate the client so they know what are the pros and cons um, of purchasing a certain coverage or purchasing a certain um, policy, and that way they can make the, the best decision for, for their individual company. All right. Um, I want to thank you very much for doing the presentation today, answering the question, and I want to encourage um, – you know, the people listening to reach out to Dave, aside from being a, a nice guy, he uh, has a tremendous amount of knowledge and expertise in this space and Sunstar is a great company and it's been growing at a very, very brisk pace. So uh, thank you very much for, for your presentation today. And we hope to have you back uh, in a couple of months to give us an update on how things are progressing. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, Michael. All right. Take care.